Hello, and welcome back. We're gonna be, well, we're gonna be collecting some bait for, for fishing, but also uh, I'm gonna be looking for a meteorite, which we now have uh, available to us. Ooh, hey, uh, the blueberries are good for dyes, and I do actually kind of like the dye feature in this game, so. Water leaf, we're gonna want some water leaf. That means we're gonna need sand. I'm not sure how we get the different planter boxes. You might notice, I mean, Shadow Orb, oh, there, there's our meteorite. Shadow Orb is not um, as good as the mining helmet because it really is, it's, it's light, but it's slow light. Now, can we step on this stuff without taking damage? Yes, we can. That's uh, thanks because of the uh, obsidian uh, skull. There are certain blocks that hurt you if you walk on them. And, um, the meteorite is one of them. If you don't have certain accessories, then it's gonna it's gonna suck. Because you can do it. I've done it before. I've uh, you know mined meteorite and even hellstone without the use of uh, obsidian skull. But it's not fun. It's better just to have it. Ha better to have it, and not need it. Need it and not have it. I I, for I forgot. You know, one of the reasons that I end up playing Terraria for so long and end up having to grind so heavily um, so many materials is because like I end up playing with friends and if you have even two people um, it has a lot of grind time because uh, you know you can't just like you can't just fight one boss and have enough material you basically it costs you have to fight two bosses per person I love Terraria but it's not super balanced when it comes to multiplayer, in my opinion, because what ends up happening is unless you guys are playing at exactly the same time uh, and you're doing all of the same stuff together, what ends up happening is that one of your friends ends up beating the curve of, of progression and it's kind of really impossible to catch up. If they, it, like, if you have certainly also like inconsiderate friends that don't really care about you matching pace with them then they can you know you can have people that just kind of blast through terraria and like yep i've already defeated the dungeon um i've already you know gotten full meteorite and i've killed the eye of cthulhu and i'm not gonna wait and you're on your own and you can go ahead and fight that boss on your own and uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna go get some dungeon stuff, and also there's a finite amount of chests in the dungeon, unless they're sharing, in which case, they're not just taking, like, sure, um, I, I want to have a Muramasa, and I want to have a this and a that from the dungeon, that's nice, but also I want to play the game, <laughs> like, I would like to play the game, um, so you do in the dungeon, and then grabbing all the stuff out of it and then giving me the loot. Sure, that's fine. It means I'm gonna stay relevant to the current progression of, of Terraria, but also I didn't get to go to the dungeon and I didn't get to collect the stuff. And at a certain point, um, the challenge of certain things is actually part of playing the game. So um, I do think that Terraria Though it is a very fun co-op experience, it's not a very balanced one when it comes to the interests of the player. Um, for instance, here's a for instance. I talked earlier about wanting to try and get the cell phone. Um, if you don't know what it takes to get the cell phone, it's it's an immense, just monolithic undertaking. It requires getting, like, basically every single informative uh, accessory in Terraria. And there's a lot. There's a lot of informative accessories um and then you yeah so you combine like it's got to be like at least 10 items that you have to find some of them are really hard to find as well like some of them like it's it's very rng based you just kind of have to hope that you find a chest that ha happens to have the accessory that you need and then you combine all of these other accessories with all of these other accessories and then combine those together and then it, you know it all kind of collapses into one item which is the cell phone and i think it's even been improved once now so it turns into a shell phone 
which I'm not sure what the shell phone does. But um, what, what I'm getting at here is uh, you might be lucky enough to, you know, have a seed, like a world seed, have a world that has all of the items necessary to make the cell phone, if you're lucky, for one player. If any of the other players take, like, any one necessary part and there isn't a duplicate, then you can't make the cell phone. I'm pretty sure there's an achievement for making a cell phone as well. Um, and I wouldn't say the cell phone is a super necessary accessory. It's not, like, world-changing. It's just kind of, you know, ends up being an item that gives you all of the information that exists in Terraria. Like, when you're sharing your game with other players, there I feel like maybe a m bit more effort could have been done to Terraria to ensure that a co-op experience was going to be ba a balanced one. Like, say, you know, this is just, just spitballing here. Uh, when you create the world, um, tell, tell you have, like, it asks some questions, like, how many players are going to play in this world? Not just, like, small, medium, or uh, large. And then you tell it, well, uh, I'm going to be playing, you know, there's going to be three players in this world. Then it would generate enough resources to allow for that, to allow for all of those players. Like, for instance, how many life gems you're going to have. There's enough life gems. Life gems are fine. There's probably enough life gems in a world to support, like, five players. To get full health, by the way. Like, there's a lot of life gems. You know, I guess what I'm really saying is that it just, sometimes in multiplayer, it can feel like a lot when you're playing with friends because you do have to share that world. You don't just have to share the resources, you also have to share the game. And the game is not designed very well for that. Like, uh, you know, another for instance, just another kind of spitballing here, but it could have been that uh, the dungeon had has a certain number of chests depending on how many players there are, and each chest would say on it, oh cool, we have the the happy lantern thing. This is because we've defeated the Eater of Worlds. The uh, people are happy. It, it might be that the, the chests would have players, specific players' names on them. I know this is not necessarily an easy thing to do, um, but it, you know, there's been so much effort put into Terraria. It would be kind of nice to see some of this stuff happen. I'm pretty sure if I create a house in the desert, um, the arms dealer in, is happiest in the desert, I think. And I also think that uh, they sell other stuff depending on if they're in the desert or not. We're gonna need a lot more mushrooms. I might wanna expand the mushroom farm. Might wanna expand the farm in general. All right, so we're gonna make some meteorite gear. I'm not gonna fully make all of the bars because sometimes the ore is necessary for certain things. So we could make a lightsaber. That's actually pretty good damage. Um, we could make the ham axe. It's our first ham axe, which is both a axe and a hammer. Uh, star cannon is not really worth it. It's a nice gimmick, but eh. drill containment unit summons a rideable drill mount. That is basically the end game. This uh, this requires like literally every major material in the game. So meteorite ore stays pretty relevant even into the the end game. So the Meteor Helmet is only 5 defense, increased magic damage. Could be worth it later, but I kind of appreciate our extra defense and also increased critical strike chance, uh, promises a bit more damage maybe. The best thing we could make right now is a lightsaber. I don't think, uh, I think I did save enough of something, some kind of material. Should be able to make it now, yeah, okay, so um, the nice thing is the phase blades all do the same amount of damage. I will make the hammock. I guess I will make the phase blade. Make a, uh, well, do I want to be, do I want to be Darth Vader or Luke Skywalker here? I don't know. People are going to judge me now. Listen, I like, I like red. That's really all it is. I'm going to put away our Star Fury. Star Fury has been very good f to us. We could make the space gun. Space gun is actually pretty good damage. Um, if we had a full meteor gear, then it would do more damage. Sure, let's make the space gun. We don't, we, we, we'll, we probably have 
enough meteor to make everything we want. So I, I don't really have to be conservative. So um, the unfortunate part is uh, I'm pretty sure not, we don't have enough time to fight uh, Skeletron. And that is the next thing we're going to be doing. I'm gonna make my way over the dungeon. We might be fighting Skeletron today. Like there's, you know, I, I've got pretty much the best gear. The, the, the attack speed on the, the phase saber is so nice. It also casts some light, so it's kind of worth just like doing it. Oh no, that star disappeared. It's always heartbreaking to see that. I love the I love the music in Terraria. It really is like just really fun. Maybe I want some more um, wood, some good trees over here. All right, here we are. So I'm just gonna like hang out here for a bit. It's it's unfortunate that I came here uh, at the the, uh, the start of a new day. I didn't know this black scorpion could be used as bait. Oh, you know what? That's what I could do is I could collect some bait while I'm here. Oh. Slime is falling from the sky, okay. Well, I guess I'll have a, a slight event to keep me company instead. Pretty sure at the end of this event, it spawns the, um, or Slime King. But I'm pretty sure this does actually summon a boss. So this will be something to do for sure. Also, there's some new, there's new uh, content in regards to slimes. You can get a slime pet. You can get like several slime pets. There's like a whole bunch of them to collect. So this is actually pretty good because it'll be something I haven't seen before. Oh, here we go. King Slime. Okay, where are they gonna appear? Oh, right on top of me, I see, okay. Oh God, they just like tele... Like, they like to telefrag you, don't they? Well, you can't fit in here, can you? I ran out. Did I run out of mana? No, I didn't. Oh god. This is actually the ideal situation. Because they can't they can't reach me like at all. Unless they teleport, of course. Nice. Nice. I want I want a slime pet. Give me a slime pet. <gasps> that is a slime pet. Steve. Kaplunk. Mmm bleb. Uh-huh. Pet. Feeling petty. Um, amazing. So we got our first slime pet. Ninja shirt um, is actually, apparently it's, it gives you uh, stats. I don't think it used to. Pretty sure that's a new thing. And it is almost nighttime, so we should be able to fight uh, Skeletron pretty soon. Okay, I saw it. So, uh, B key. There we go. Buff. Curse. There we go. It doesn't do too much damage. A little bit. Helps to have a good ranged weapon. Skeletron is honestly really easy. You can even, like, fight him first. You, you can pretty much avoid all of the other bosses if you want. And just shoot straight for the dungeon. I'm just like so used to fighting harder versions of this boss that I'm like, yeah, we wanna we wanna definitely do this the optimal way. Skeletron's one of the few bosses you can't fight more than once, I think. Actually, I might be wrong about that. You might be able to fight him many times. I'm actually I'm a little bit concerned about our damage output right now. We will probably kill him, but you know. Pretty, pretty proud of some of our, our movement here. There's not much to worry about here. I think I will do the dungeon in this episode because this will this is kind of a no-brainer. I mean, later I'm sure we're going to be fighting like several bosses if you count repeats. Like I'm definitely going to want to fight the uh, King Slime more than a couple of times. Done. Got ourselves some money. Skeletron has been defeated. We can check out the dungeon. Let's do so. I don't think this the dungeon is much to fear in the early game. I'm also gonna destroy chests as I find them because you don't. You, one of the worst feelings ever is like, oh, there's a chest, and then you uh, <laughs> you go to look inside and there's nothing because you've already looted it. That's another thing I, I often find is like kind of a pain in the butt. 
when playing with friends is they never empty the chest. Oh, that's a kind of a... This is a... What? Oh, I see. Right. Um, dicey beginning here. Wonderful find, uh, the goblin tinker. That'd be kind of fun. What? Slumbalore. Poot ahem. Oh, then we got another slime pet. Nice. Um, we've got a couple of these id super chests. They tend to have really good stuff. Oh, there we got the mechanic. This is good. I saw I saw a chest up there with a key. Oh, and we need this uh, summoner's altar as well. Yeah, the the, the phase um, saber is really nice. I thought I had a key. Did I not? Oh, I guess I used the key. There's a slimo down there. Ouch. That has a key, so let's go get him. You're basically at the whim of RNG a little bit, waiting for those uh, the slimes with keys to spawn. Cobalt shield. This is definitely one of the most important items we could get. And we also got some spelunker potions. Uh, what else can I, I should stop carrying this bucket. This bucket is like really not helpful for me. There's actually a good reason to um, have the blue candle around. Increasing the odds for enemies to spawn means we'll, we'll increase the odds for certain helpful creatures to spawn that like, for instance, spawns the golden keys. Oh, there's the, um, nice. There's the goblin. Excellent. We've got ourselves a goblin. Oh, I did. I just hit the B key to get rid of the thorns potion, but it ah, uh, it used up the spelunker potion. Oh no, no, I'm gonna die. No. What is that over there? Oh, I see. That's a painting. Oh, that's that's really brutal. We could go back. Right, let's dump some stuff off first. Using that spelunker potion by accident, and then dying. That's like the worst thing I could have done. I still need to make a bed, but I don't really want to. What else is new? You know, I seem to be like, there's a lot of things I want, uh, I should do, but I'm not doing. It's just like in real life. Um, I feel like I should call the episode there actually. Cause you know, it's going to take a while for me to get back to the dungeon. And uh, it's a whole thing. You know, the dungeon is, is quite extensive. So in the next episode, we're gonna, we're gonna dabble with the Goblin Tinkerer for sure. Um, finish the dungeon and then maybe start working on the next part, which is going to be the, uh, the Wall of Flesh. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, hit that like button. Consider subscribing. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.